Welcome to this first video on mechanics. Now in this video, we're going to look at a whole bunch of the general mechanics equations. This is going to be to do with movement, the forces that produce movement, and work that happens during movement. So we're going to look at a whole bunch of formulas and hopefully you'll see how they apply. So to start with, let's look at something moving, for example a car. There's a whole bunch of ways that we could describe this movement. We could say it's gone a certain distance, it started when it was still, it had an initial velocity of zero, it sped up to a final velocity, it was accelerating, and this all happened over a certain time. All of this list are things that we can use to describe movement. From all of these five factors, there are what's called four kinematic equations. Kinematic just means something that moves. So this is four equations to do with things that move. And these relate together the final velocity, which is Vf, initial velocity, which is Vi, A, which is acceleration, T, which is time, and D, which is distance, in a whole bunch of different ways. Now you'll notice that each of these four equations is missing one of these factors, except for initial velocity. Initial velocity actually makes it into every single equation. But other than that, you're going to get given three of these factors, and you're going to have to use one of these equations to find the fourth one. Now these are just like two previous equations we had, we're just including an initial and a final velocity rather than just one single velocity right the way through, which you probably would have experienced last year. Now in level one, you should have picked up the velocity equals the change in distance over the change in time. That's a simplified version of one of these equations. In the same way, acceleration is a change in velocity over a change in time is another simplified version of these four kinematic equations. Now there are some other factors that we need to take into consideration when we're talking about movement. The first one of those is force, how hard we're pushing something. And that can be shown by how big the mass is of whatever is getting pushed and how fast it's accelerating, how quickly it's changing speed. So if you have a really big force, you can move something quite big at a really quick speed. We always have the force of gravity which is always acting downwards on us. This comes from our mass because we all have a mass and gravity, which always pulls us downwards. Now remember little g here means gravity, and that's an acceleration. We all accelerate towards the ground at the same speed, at 9.81 meters per second squared. And that's what gives us our weight force. The next two things that we need to know about our work, that's how much energy we put into doing something, and power, that's how fast we can use that energy, or exert that energy. Work is given by the formula force multiplied by distance, and we're going to look into that in a little bit more detail soon. Power is how fast you can do that work. If you can do work really, really quickly, that makes you really powerful. And the last important factor that is not actually a formula, but you just need to understand, is that work is actually a type of energy. When you do work, you have to exert energy. They're actually the same thing. So in these formulas and in energy formulas, you can actually substitute in work for energy. Now let's look at some of these in slightly more detail. Firstly, let's look at work. Work is given by this formula, force multiplied by distance. Now the key thing is that the force and the distance must be going in the same direction. So if you have a man here who's pushing a big block, he might be pushing with a force of 200 newtons. And he might happen to push this block one meter along the ground. So using this data, we can work out how much work you would have to do to move this block one meter. So we'd plug in the force of 200 into our formula, and plug in the distance of one meter, and we'd find out that he did 200 joules of work. Now 200 joules is the same unit as energy, because remember, work and energy are the same thing. But remember we said just at the very start, that they must be going in the same direction. So if, for example, he wasn't pushing perfectly horizontally, say he was pushing up on an angle of 20 degrees, that would mean that not all of his force is going into moving the block. So we need to discount the part which is pushing upwards and just count the part which pushes across horizontally in the same direction. Now we need to actually use Sokotoa or trigonometry to do this. We need to work out how much of that is actually pushing in the same direction as this distance. So in order to do that, we need to make a right angle triangle here and work out this horizontal length. And we do that by doing 200, the hypotenuse, multiplied by cos 20. And that's going to work out as 188. That is the force in the same direction as the distance. So if we wanted to work out the work that this person had done pushing the box sideways, 
we would only use the 188 as our force because that's the only one in the same direction. So if we plug this into our work formula, the force multiplied by the distance of one meter, that gives us a work of 188. Or if we want to round properly, 190 joules. Remember, we're using joules, the same unit as energy. Next, we want to look at power. This is how fast work gets done. Now, the formula for power is work divided by a time. And remember that work is the same as energy, so it's how fast energy is happening at the same time. So let's look at this example to try and get an understanding of what happens. How powerful is this person who can run up the stairs in two seconds? First of all, we need to understand the energy or the work required to move this person up some stairs. So let's see how much energy is involved to start with. That's the work side of things. And remember, because work and energy are the same thing, this person is going to gain some gravitational potential energy. So we can actually calculate gravitational potential energy, and that will tell us their level of work. So subbing in this person's mass, which we know is 50 kgs, subbing in gravity, which is always 9.81, and that gets told to us on our formula sheet, multiplied by the height this person goes, they go up 5 meters, that gives us an energy, or a work, of 2,695 joules. Now, if it takes this person two seconds to use this 2,695 joules, that means their power would be 1,347 watts. Watts are the unit for power. It's a capital W and it's spelled W-A-T-T-S and it measures how fast work is done. So what you need to know from this video, first of all, are that we have a whole bunch of formulas. Now, it's absolutely crucial in mechanics that you understand every single one of these formulas. So you should be able to go through these one by one and pick out, say, I know what VF is, it's final velocity. I know what VI is, it's initial velocity. Same with A, acceleration, and T, time. Same with distance, with force, with mass, with gravity, with work, and with power. It's really important you understand all of these things so that when you're looking to solve a problem and using your formula sheet, you can actually find the correct formula to use. Now the second thing we looked at after all of these formulas was the fact that work is made up of force multiplied by distance. But the force and the distance must be in the same direction. If they're not, use Sokotoa to make a right angle triangle and you'll be able to find the force that's going in the same direction as your distance. The next thing you need to remember is that work and energy are the same things. Sometimes you need to find a work but in order to get that, you need to use a formula for energy, like we did in the previous example. And lastly, power is how fast work is done. So you calculate the work, and then you divide that by how long it takes you to do that in seconds. And that gives you how much power measured in watts. Let's look at a question now. A car here of mass 1500 kgs is being lifted by a crane at a constant speed of 0.3 meters per second we need to calculate the net force that's acting on the car. So what you'd do here is you'd go to your formula sheet, you'd look for a formula with force in it to start with. Now once you've found some formulas with force in it, you'd look for one that has a mass involved, and one that may have a constant speed or relate to that. The best formula you'll be able to find is F equals MA. That has the force and it has a mass. But notice, it also has an acceleration. But it says in the question, there's constant speed. So constant speed means the speed isn't changing, so there must be zero acceleration. And zero times any mass, even if it's 1500 kg, equals a zero force. Therefore, if the acceleration's zero, the force must be zero as well. And that comes back to Newton's laws, which says that any object going at constant speed, whether it's standing still or moving at a constant speed, has an overall net force of zero. Now the second part to this question, is we need to calculate the work done to lift the car to a height of seven meters. If we look at the formula for work, we know it's force multiplied by distance. But in order to find out the work, we need to understand the force involved first. Looking for a formula for force when we're lifting is force equals the mass of the car multiplied by the effect of gravity. Now that we know this formula, we can substitute in the mass of the car, multiply that by gravity, and that's going to give us the overall force that we need to use to lift the car. So we can substitute this into our formula, the force of 14,700 we just calculated, multiplied by the 7 meter distance that we get lifted. And that gives us a final work 
of 102,900 joules. Now this is the correct answer and this is an end answer, but you could work this out in an alternative way as well. Because work is the same as energy, we could just work out the energy required to lift the car 7 meters. So if we do that, we could use the energy formula that's gravitational potential energy equals the mass multiplied by gravity multiplied by the height you lift it by. Now substituting in the numbers we already know, a mass of 1500 kgs, gravity of 9.8 which is always given to you and always the same, and a height of 7 meters. And this will give us the exact same answer of 102,900 joules. Because energy and work are the same thing, therefore we can work either one of those out. So hopefully you've got an understanding in this video of work, of power, and of the fact that you're going to be given a whole lot of movement equations and you must know what they all mean. So spend the time and learn these equations.